This is the first section of chapter five in the quality book Polar Coordinates. And this is all about polar coordinates and equations. Now, you've come across coordinates before where we have X and Y. Okay, and we describe a point on that 2D plane using X and Y. So these is what we call the Cartesian plane. And these are Cartesian coordinates. And so these are the coordinates you've probably learned about from probably year five even, or year four. So we know all about those coordinates. So that's one way of describing a point on a 2D plane. Another way of describing a point on a 2D plane is with imaginary numbers. So we have the real and imaginary axis. And we have a point here. And uh, we display this on an Argan diagram. So this is uh, another 2D plane, this Argan diagram. And we can describe a point. If I just do a, a line here, and um, we can describe it either as a complex number. So we will have some values there, let's say A and B. So that would be either um, A plus uh, BI or IB is one way of describing that point. You can also describe this point using the modulus and the argument. So if the modulus is R an argument is um, theta, then you can use that modulus argument form and you can uh, work out the modulus and the argument of this. So you could say R cos theta plus I sine theta. Okay, so what we've got here are different ways of describing a point on a 2D plane. Polar coordinates is just another way of describing a point on a 2D plane. So another way of um, describing a point in 2D space basically or 2D plane. And the way that this works, it's similar to um, the modulus argument form of a um, complex number and the way that we reference that in that we have R, okay, so R is the, the distance from, distance from the pole. So you can think of the pole as being like the origin, basically, it's the same type of thing. So R is gonna be like that. And actually it may be helpful to think of it as radius. Yeah, so you might want to think of it like that. Yeah, so here's somebody thinking, and they're thinking radius. And we have um, uh, an angle, theta. Now, this is measured in radians, just like it is with complex numbers and the argument, but it's only uh, in the anticlockwise direction. So anti-clockwise, so it's always going to be positive. So positive only. Okay, so when we're measuring an angle, we're going round from this line here, round that way, and we can keep going round and round and round. And we measure it from what we call here the initial line. So this line here, right, the x-axis is called the initial line. So positive only, and we'll just put down measured from the initial line. So a bit like um, how, um, what's his name? What am I thinking of? Um, when you've got uh, bearings, that's the one, that's what I was thinking of. A bit like bearings is measured from the north. This angle is measured in radians from the initial line. Now it's helpful to be able to convert um, these polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And we can 
uh, do it by using these. So r cos theta gives us x coordinate and r sine theta gives us y. Now, why would that be? Let's draw a random uh, point here like this. Here's theta, here's r. And using simple trigonometry, we can see that this length here is going to be r cos theta r cos theta and this here side here is going to be r sine theta so you can see where we get our x and y now by using the identity um, sine squared plus cos squared is one i can then get this relationship here that r squared equals x squared plus y squared and that's useful for turning a polar equation into a Cartesian equation. So I'll just put that um, here. So sine squared plus cos squared is one. So that's used to sort of generate this and you can see how we can get that um, if you do our uh, cos theta squared plus um, r sine theta squared factorize out the r and then the cos squared plus sine squared becomes one um, and then you've got this x squared plus y squared and then lastly uh, since our angles are measured in radians we write arc tan instead of tan inverse and we'll do that to work out the angle Okay, so we need to turn each of these Cartesian uh, coordinates into polar coordinates. So always draw a sketch because it's really important that we get the uh, angle right. So 3, 4. Okay, it's going to be a point here. So this is where I want to find R and theta. They're going to be these bits here. So um, I can see that um, R is going to be, which is Pythagoras, the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. So that's 5. And theta. Okay. So um, if I do arctan, basically that's to remind me to do it in uh, radians. And... I've got these sides here, so this is 3 and this is 4. Um, so opposite over uh, adjacent, so arctan 4 over 3 will give me the argument. So let's do that. Let's make sure we're in radians. And shift hand uh, 4 over 3. And uh, we'll have to round it. Three significant figures. So 0.927, that's three significant figures, 0.927. So we write the um, this as polar coordinates. You write them almost like coordinates. R goes here and theta goes here. Yeah, so maybe that's something I should have mentioned before that polar coordinates are written literally like coordinates. So you have R and you have theta like that. Part B, we have five negative 12. So again, we're gonna do a sketch. So it's only a sketch, remember, it's not exact. And five negative 12, so five here, negative 12 down here. Right, so it's this point. So I'm just gonna draw that. To help me so this time this is r now theta remember is measured from the initial line like that so theta is going to be that there so i don't think i'm going to find it directly so i'll probably find the angle around the other side and do um two pi or 360 minus that so let's start with r first of all so r is just going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 or negative 12 squared 
um, it doesn't really make uh, much difference it's a length really that we're interested in but I'll put negative 12 squared that's a Pythagorean triple so that's 13 now <clears throat> to get that angle that I want I'm going to work out this one here and that uh, or I could say that um, this angle theta is going to equal 2 pi minus that other angle that I'm going to work out down there so here's my right angle triangle here with uh, 5 and 12 so I'm going to do the arctan of the opposite over the adjacent 12 over 5 so 2 pi minus arctan 12 over 5 this is where the diagram comes in useful without the diagram you know we'll have problems so I'll do 2 pi minus shift tan 12 over 5 and I get um, 5.107 um, so I'll write that to three significant figures so I'll put 5.11 so that's 3 SF so I'll write the polar coordinate as 13 5.11 and then part C uh, again a diagram so both X and Y are negative so uh, negative root 3 is here and negative 1 is down here so this is the point that we're interested in here so this is going to be R and then this is going to be um, theta so what I will do is I'll work out this one and add it to pi 180 so let's work out r first so r is just going to be the square root of um, negative root 3 squared plus negative 1 squared that will be root 4 which is 2 now for the angle I'm going to do pi plus the arctan of now I want to get this the right way around so let me just draw in the sides here uh, and this side is root 3 this side is 1 so the arctan of the opposite 1 over root 3 1 over root 3 so let's work that out so shift and the standard form button to get pi plus arctan 1 over root 3 and I get a lovely nice answer of 7 pi over 6 or 7 6 pi there we go so this is going to be 2 7 pi over 6 so here we're going to convert the following polar coordinates into Cartesian form so we're going to be using the r cos theta equals the x coordinate r sine theta equals the y coordinate and it's as straightforward as that so in part a r is 10 theta is 4 pi over 3 so r cos theta the x coordinate is going to be 10 cos 4 pi over 3 and the y coordinate is going to be 10 sine 4 pi over 3 so all we need to do is just work those out so it's pretty easy remember in radians so 10 cos um, 4 pi over 3 and we get negative 5 for the x coordinate and then if I just go back delete the cos oh, I don't, can't delete the cos just type in again so 10 sine uh, 4 pi 
over 3 and I get negative 5 root 3 negative 5 root 3 so the Cartesian coordinate is negative 5 negative 5 root 3 let's now do the same for B so in B R is 8 and theta is 2 pi over 3 so our x coordinate is going to be 8 cos 2 pi over 3 and our y coordinate is going to be 8 sine 2 pi over 3 so if we work those out so 8 cos 2 pi over 3 2 pi over 3 gives us negative 4 and 8 sine 2 pi over 3 2 pi over 3 gives us 4 root 3 I don't need diagrams with these just plug them straight in so that's going to give me the Cartesian coordinate negative 4 4 root 3 Okay, find Cartesian equations for the following curves. So this is where we're going to be using this r squared equals x squared plus y squared. That's going to be useful um, because like this side here, we've got um, the polar form. And over here, we've got the Cartesian form. Anything with um, x and y is Cartesian. So also... Um, r cos theta equals x so x is Cartesian as well and r sine theta equals y so we're going to be using those three to help us convert these um, uh, polar uh, equations into Cartesian equations so a we're starting with r equals 5 now if I have a look I really want r squared equals something so if we square both sides I'll get um, r squared equals 25 now r squared is x squared plus y squared so I can just simply take out the r squared and put 25 so that's easy to change now what I can see is actually it's not asking for what it is but it's a circle uh, center origin radius 5 that might be useful later on when we've got to sketch these things so basically if you've got r equals something you've got a circle with a center on the origin and a number represents the radius okay part b b let's get right color here now you'll notice in both um, parts uh, B and C we've got this we've got a double angle and the little equations we have here have single angles so we need to change them so this is where we'd be using our our double angle rules to help us so for example um, cos 2 theta is 2 um, cos square theta uh, minus 1 and sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta so the first step in changing this to a Cartesian equation is to change out that cos 2 theta using the double angle so we'll have um, <clears throat> r equals 2 plus, and in its place the double angle, um, so 2 cos square theta minus 1. Uh, from there, that simplifies uh, because we've got like the 2 minus 1. So basically got 1 plus 2 cos square theta. Now we can only ever change r squared to uh, x squared plus y squared dot um, r cos theta or i sine theta if we've got anything else we can't change it straight to a cartesian 
So we need to do something with this one here because we, we can't change that to something else uh, as part of a Cartesian equation. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to change that to R squared. So we're going to multiply everything by R squared. So then we will get R cubed equals R squared plus 2R squared cos squared theta. Now what I'm going to do is just rewrite everything so it's in terms of either R squared or R cos theta. So the R cubed I can actually write as R squared to the power 3 over 2. Yeah, if you multiply those out, you get r cubed. The other side, well, the r squared, that's fine. I'll be able to substitute that in a moment. And then the two um, r squared cos squared, I really want r cos squared in the brackets. That's not a problem. If I put squared here and two here, so that's exactly the same thing as, as what I had before. Um, but it's written now so that I can substitute r squared for x squared plus y squared here and here and I can replace r cos theta for x here so the rest is just now substitution um, that will give us um, x squared plus y squared to the power 3 over 2 bit of a strange equation you often get these when you change these um, polar equations to Cartesian ones. The R squared I can change to X squared plus Y squared. And then the R cos theta that's in brackets I can change to X. Okay. And then that would be our Cartesian equation. Yeah, we can leave it in that form. That's absolutely fine. But I can see that well I've got X squared and two X squared so they can all go together. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, so x squared plus y squared to the power of 3 over 2 equals 3x squared plus y squared. So that's the method. It's to try and get everything in terms of r squared or r cos theta, r sine theta. Now part c, where I've got r squared equals sine 2 theta. So again, the first step is going to be using the uh, double angle um, because I can't change sine 2 theta to something, but I can if I change it to a double angle. So R squared equals 2 sine theta cos theta. OK, I'm on the, the right tracks here. Now I do need uh, to get an R in there and an R in front of uh, cos theta and sine theta and I'm going to do that by multiplying both sides by r squared so if I do that I'll have r to the power 4 or actually let me write it as r squared squared just to make the substitution a bit easier to see what I'm substituting and then I'll have 2 r sine theta r cos theta so here I can see really clearly where I'm going to do my substitutions. So that will give me an answer of, so R squared is going to be X squared plus Y squared. Squared equals 2 R cos theta, which is Y, and 2 uh, um, R sine theta, which is, sorry, R cos theta, which is X. So I basically got 2 X y and that will be our Cartesian equation yeah so try and get this in your equation or this in your equation or this in your equation so that this can be changed for x squared plus y squared this can be changed to uh, x and this can be changed to y and it may involve the use of the double angle formulae, which I've got at the top here. Okay, find polar equations for the following.
So this is like the opposite of what we did before. So basically, if I see x squared plus y squared, I want to change it to r squared. If I see x, I want to change it to r cos theta. And if I see y, I want to change it to r sine theta. So um, it may involve a little bit of uh, rearranging to help us do that. So in part a, for example, where I've got y squared equals 4x. First of all, well, we know that uh, y is r sine theta. So that's y squared. 4x is going to be 4r cos theta. And the rest now is trying to make either r or r squared the subject. So from here, um, on the left, I can write r squared sine squared theta equals 4r cos theta. Dividing both sides by r will give me r sine squared theta equals 4 cos theta. So from there, I can make r the subject. So that will be 4 cos theta over sine squared theta, which I could leave like that if I wanted to. Uh, sorry, I missed a squared out there. Or I could say, right, um, that's the same as uh, 4 cos theta over sine theta times by 1 over sine theta. And cos over sine is cot, so I could write 4 cot theta. And then 1 over sine is cosec cosec theta. So I could then write it more simply in that form. OK, part B, we have x squared minus y squared equals 5. You think it might be a circle. It looks a bit like a circle, but it's not plus, it's minus. Um, so x squared is going to be um, r cos theta squared minus r sine theta all squared equals 5. Let's um, expand the bracket. So r squared cos squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta is 5. Um, so we want the uh, try and make r the subject. So I'm going to factorize the left hand side. So then I've got cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is 5. Now this is the double angle for cos. Yeah, so cos 2 theta can either be written as 2 cos squared theta minus 1 or uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta or uh, cos squared minus sine squared. And that's what we have there. So that can be simplified. So um, r squared cos 2 theta equals 5. And then we're going to make r squared the subject. So we'll have 5 over cos 2 theta. And if you've got something over cos, that's the same as sec. So you could write this as r squared equals 5 sec 2 theta. And there's no need to square root it. Yeah, because you get into problems with positive and negative square roots. Just leave that as it is. And in part C, we have y root 3 equals x plus 4. So this should be a, a straight swap, actually. So um, we're going to have r sine theta times by root 3. So that's why root 3 r sine theta. I think I said cos, I meant sine, equals r cos theta plus 4. 
So the next thing we'll do is we'll bring the r cos theta over. So you've got root 3 r sine theta minus r cos theta equals 4. So remember we want to make r the subject, so let's factorise out the r. So we'll have r root 3 sine theta minus cos theta equals 4. Now at this point we're going to use double angle for sine a minus b for this bit. I'll show you what I mean. So sine a minus b, so you may not necessarily spot this, is equivalent to uh, sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Now if I match that up with what I've written, I've got... Um, a root 3 here so a root 3 uh, here yeah I've got a sine theta here I'm just trying to sort of match everything up and I've got the minus and then I've got a cos theta here and where I've got uh, cos b you can think of actually as, as like 1 so I can say to myself, right, um, cos b is root 3, sine b is 1, okay, sine b over cos b is tan b, and that's going to be uh, 1 over root 3. So if I do the tan inverse, of 1 over root 3, so tan inverse 1 over root 3, I get pi over 6. So actually, what I've got written in the brackets, if I, well, I've just, let's go to this bit first. So I've just worked out, uh, if I match things up, so it's sine, uh, a is theta, and b is pi over 6. Yeah, so what I've got written in that brackets is the same as sine theta minus pi over 6. So that will give me R, and I can write here sine theta minus pi over 6 equals 4. So the last step now, uh, if I'm going to make R the subject, that means dividing both sides by that sine. So that will become like 4 over sine, which will become cosec. So 4 uh, cosec theta minus pi over 6. And this is an equation of the, um, the, po the polar equation. Uh, sorry, that, this is an, a, a polar equation of the Cartesian equation. You'll notice in the book they've got a slightly different form. They've divided everything by two. You'll get uh, like an equivalent um, equation to this. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 5a on page 104. So all the stuff there in that little box here, which is now inside the cloud, you can use to help you convert between polar and uh, Cartesian coordinates and equations so remember this is that point there is called your pole like the origin this is called the initial line and then you know we have some sort of point up here which we um, describe by r and theta so r is always going to be going anti-clockwise from the from the initial line and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.